Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, today is another really exciting day in the shop here, and that is because number one, we're not gonna be doing a ton of welding, but number two, we're going to install about $15,000 worth of suspension, brakes, and a Dana 60 into this car. And by the end of this episode, this car will finally be a roller. So you guys have been watching now for a few months on this CUDA build, and you know, to date it's been all sheet metal work. We've done basically a full rebody on this car with the exception of the roof and the firewall and the inner rockers, I think. Everything else just about is, is brand new. So along with that theme, this car is getting a ton more brand new pieces of equipment and some significant, significant upgrades. Okay, so first off, before I start digging into all the details here with every single piece of this kit and what we're gonna do today, two things. Number one, I absolutely could not build this car, build really any of my cars without the help of my sponsors. So I wanna say a huge shout out, huge thank you to QA1, Auto Metal Direct, Eastwood, Gunny Wheel, like everybody that stepped up and really, really helped me out. I can't say thanks enough. And those of you guys that watch my videos should hopefully appreciate that they've stepped up and helped and also help support their companies by buying their products. They're fantastic. And as you guys will see today, it's the highest of the high quality. So number two, if you're one of them people that like to watch my videos and not subscribe, what are you waiting for? This car is going to be badass. We've got the charger going. We've got some other builds coming up. One actually that's coming out in here in a few weeks. Click that subscribe button and also click that like button and it'll really help me out. Okay, so let's dive into some of the details here of this kit. We'll start here with the bottom. Of course, this is a full tubular K-frame. Okay, what's really nice about this kit, I mean, it's gonna completely fit into the original factory K-frame um, bolt mount locations. And that said too, just speaking for the front kit, the way that QA1 advertises it is that it's a you know no welding required kit. We're gonna see today as we go to bolt all of this, these parts and pieces in. But uh, it's a full tubular K-frame, it's gonna reduce the weight, and then it's also going to make a lot more room for us um, with, the, uh, with the headers that we're gonna need for that Gen 3 Hemi. Another really trick thing with this uh, K-frame here is that there's modular engine mount. So in my case, we're using the Gen 3 Hemis. You guys can use the same K-frame with 426 Hemis, with your 440s, with all sorts of different motors. And uh, all it does, guys, it bolts right there in that location and uh, mounts right up to your motor and it's super, super simple to use. So we've got a power rack and pinion steering here that's inside of this box. I won't get it out of the plastic. You guys will see it go on here in just a few minutes, but that, I'm so tired of hitting my head on that wheel. I'm sure you guys just saw that. <laughs> I don't hit it on any of these yellow brackets or bars. I bash my head on these damn wheels about every time I'm underneath of this car. But of course we got tubular upper and lower control arms here. We've got the Mustang two style uh, spindles. Um, so you can fit all sorts of different brakes. Speaking of brakes, I'm going to give you guys six reasons, six more reasons to subscribe to the channel. We've got Willwood six piston brakes, two piece rotors with hats. I mean, like this car is getting everything that you could possibly want on a car like this. It's going to have double adjustable, duh, Jesus, I can't talk, double adjustable front and rear coilovers here on this car. As I mentioned earlier, we've got the four link, we've got all the hardware, the parts, the pieces, man. There's so much stuff here, guys. I've done most of the unboxing to show you kind of what I have in the garage here, but we still have quite a bit more unboxing to do here. So, and then the cherry on top for me and something that I've always wanted in an old Mopar like this is a Dana 60. This one right here actually came out of a charger. It's got 354 sure grip in it. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how to mount that up, how to weld that in place. And then also uh, in a future video, we'll be opening up this diff, diff cover here in the back because that's definitely not a, a built-in oiling feature. That cover's got a pretty good leak. So we'll open it up, check out the fluid, check out the bearings, all that kind of stuff. We'll probably end up replacing just about everything in there. Um, but this is getting retrofitted with the Willwood disc brakes also in the back. So with a kit like this, guys, I started laying it out, started putting all the parts and pieces out here. The first thing we're gonna do, and you guys could totally build this on a tabletop and put it all in together, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna bolt this into place here and uh, start hanging parts off of it. Um, with my uh, front subframe here, or excuse me, my front frame rails, and then also the ones in the charger, one thing that I am gonna do right off the bat is that we're gonna clean up all of the threads um, 
on the, the receiving end on the car and then also um, on my bolts. So your front subframe bolts here are your 5 8 with the 11 thread pitch on them. And uh, yeah, you don't want to go driving these home and blast them up in there because then you're going to ruin the threads and they're a nightmare. Well, you really can't get them out of there. You're going to have to cut it open, weld some new ones in there, and it'd be a real, real pain in the ass. So we'll start by doing that. We'll prep everything out and then we'll get this front subframe hung up and start having fun. So let's get to work. All right guys, so when it comes time to install the coilover kit, it's super, super simple. So first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take this bottom screw here, and of course you're gonna want to anti-seize all the threads on this thing. Unfortunately, I don't have any right now at my house, so this whole thing is gonna come back apart. This is strictly being put together 
so that way we can put weight on the car, fit the engine, all that kind of stuff. This will all be coming back apart and we'll do it then. But all you do, put this screw on here, thread this all the way down. Okay, and then the, uh, the kit comes with a few different washers and then also needle bearings. And so the sequence, washer, needle bearing, and you're gonna wanna anesthetize both sides of the bearing as well. Washer on top of that. Then the coil spring goes on top of, actually, two things. Real quick, we're gonna wanna extend the cylinder here, or the piston into this. And then I also went ahead, I already cracked this loose. So we'll go ahead and we'll take that off as well. Okay. Coil spring goes on. And then on this hat right here, this is where your other washer is gonna go, just like that. Then put this guy back on here, seat that. And then we are going to reinstall the rod end. It is kind of a pain to, to reach up in there with the wrench, because I believe it's a 7 8 wrench that you gotta reach up in there to tighten that back down with. But if you kind of fit it diagonally underneath of the, uh, the spring there, you can get it to fit. So, and of course, this is gonna be loose until we start putting tension here on the bottom screw, okay? So, we got that tightened down. Now we can reach up inside of there. Just like that. And then we can tighten it down. One thing you definitely do not wanna do is hold this bearing with a screwdriver in the middle of this. It's pretty thin metal, and uh, yeah, you'll definitely chip it if you do that. There we go. Okay, so your kit's gonna come with a coilover wrench. Okay, and this is actually pretty sweet that uh, comes with a little ratchet on the, on the end of this, but now we're gonna tighten this up until it has tension on it. And uh, just for kind of a baseline here, I'm just gonna expose, let's say five threads on each one of the coil springs. And then we'll go ahead and we'll slap it on the car. All right guys, so after a really long night last night, I'm back out here in the garage today and I'm at a loss for words. I took pictures of it last night before I went to bed. I woke up, no, it was not a dream. <laughs> this car got the most ridiculous suspension I could have ever wanted on this thing. And uh, yeah, it all went together extremely well. 
You know, another thing too, going back to a few videos ago when I was really pushing you guys to install, you know, the entire front clip together. I mean, literally all of the bolts have fallen in. Everything is extremely tight on this car. It's all super, super tight fitting, like with the perfect amount of bushings, spacers, everything else, a ton of adjustability here. I mean, it is a complete soup to nuts kit. Everything went in perfect. And honestly, this is going way too smooth. So I hope it stays smooth because now things are about to get even more badass. We're gonna install this Willwood six piston brake setup. I've got these two piece uh, vented and uh, cross drilled rotors here that are absolutely killer. <laughs> I can't wait to see this on the car. Um, and uh, yeah, same thing with this guys. And I'll of course, I'll throw part numbers and everything here um, on the bottom of this video so you guys can check it all out. But this entire brake kit, you know, this is the full front. The rears are pretty much exactly the same, but it's everything that you need to bolt this thing straight up to the car. And with this car um, getting the uh, the QA1 stuff, this is gonna be running, or it is now running obviously, the, uh, the Mustang 2 style front spindles. Yeah, I said Mustang. So you gotta make sure that you get the right Willwood kit with that. You don't wanna go throwing on a, uh, you know, an old Dodge kit or Plymouth kit on whatever you're building with this. So you gotta get the right stuff to bolt it up and to make it all work together. So another thing, and this is gonna sound super silly and kind of stupid, read the directions, okay? <laughs> I had to go online to get the uh, the QA1 directions and you know I joked yesterday about the first thing having to do is drill out and you know weld and do different things. Step 1 of the install for the front kit is drill out the bump stops. <laughs> so I know that sounds really dumb, but the directions for this are also fantastic. Anybody can put this together. There's really, aside from the bump stops, there's no other cutting, no other welding, everything fit just like it's supposed to. So the Willwood kit's exactly the same. It, the, the diagrams, everything in there, it's all labeled. It's all pretty damn easy to put together. So enough talking, let's go ahead, let's get these brakes put together and let's see how badass this front end's really gonna look. All right guys, so our entire front suspension is completely installed here. The Willwood brakes are on. My goodness, do they look fantastic. I'm so excited about this. The clearances are all good all the way around. The tolerances are super tight. And I mean, man, it's meant to be there. It's meant to be exactly where it's at. And uh, I don't think it could really fit any better than what it does. So brakes are on, coilovers are on, steering linkage is on. I've also got the Gen 3 Hemi mounts on, which I didn't show the video of this here, guys, but super simple. It's got a couple shims that kind of go on each side of this. If you have to move it forward or back, you can do that. But uh, everything here is just loose because here this weekend, we are actually going to start dismantling the Challenger and we're gonna get this engine and the TR6060 transmission fit into place, which sounds like I'm gonna have my work cut out for me because I'm gonna have to end up opening up quite a bit of the uh, the floor pan and then also the torsion support I'm gonna have to cut out the entire center section so you don't want to miss that 
but we'll worry about that a different day for now it's time to worry about this four link install we're going to jump straight to the back side of the car here and uh, taking a look at all of the parts we've got we've got a rear sway bar we've also got the coil over so i went ahead assembled all these you guys already saw that no magic there it's really the exact same process we've got our trailing arms as well and then also these brackets here which mount to the bottom of the um, the shock plates on the dana 60. so with this kit you are going to have to weld it in i don't know if you can bolt it in or not i believe the directions just refer to welding it in and uh, guys this is easy enough to weld in it really isn't too big of a deal so you can see here those little v's right there and right there now when you go to put this up into the car should be a snug fit if it's not you can actually just shim it with some plate here on the inside of that that's actually what the directions call out to do i've had it in here a couple times and uh the fitment is really really nice which again is more reassurance here that my measurements that a lot of people wanted to call me out on are good <laughs> and the frame rails are exactly where they need to be but uh those two little v-notches i showed you actually center on the two holes here for this bump stop on each side so you're going to line up those v-notches right here with that hole and with this hole the same thing with the other side as you guys can see i went ahead i ground everything down so it's all bare metal and then i also went ahead and used some weld through primer and it's dry and it's ready to start fitting but we're going to go ahead we're going to hit this thing up here into place we're going to make sure that the v's are over the holes and then also the instructions say to basically make it fit as low as possible and then also to make sure that your strut mounts are straight up and down so a little bit of finagling just make sure that the v notches are lined up and again that it's as low as possible and uh, make sure it's center take a look at it from side to side take some measurements do whatever you need to do and burn it in so this should be the last of the welding for this episode and the directions do call out to just um, plug weld this here where the holes are you guys know my style by now i'm probably going to end up just welding this thing solid all the way around so that way i never have to worry about it and again t-bone if you're watching this video 30 years from now and you're wondering why dad did such a stupid thing as to weld it in solid i'm sorry bud <laughs> but we're going to make this thing to last hopefully you won't have to ever do that buddy so let's go ahead let's get it up into place let's get it centered and let's get it welded up
All right guys, so as you just saw, a lot of progress has been made and I didn't do a whole lot of talking, nor did I do a whole lot of recording. Obviously, as you can see, the rear axles in the car, we've got everything measured out. So let me just give you a quick high level of everything that I did. Okay, so you guys saw first thing we did, we hung the lower trailing arms, the uppers, we got the coilovers, we hung everything where it needed to be. Then we lowered it down. I used the lower coilover mounts as well as the lower trailing arm mount here to kind of lift the axle up into place and that's pretty much what's holding it in there now. So after that, put it down, lowered it down to what the ride height's going to be and it's pretty close to what it is. So this car is going to get 18 inch wheels and I have to do that because of the brake setup that I'm running and then also running the four inch drop front spindles or two to four inch drop front spindles. You have to run bigger wheels. And so here in the next couple days, um, Gunny Wheels has helped out a lot with this build also. So they sent me a set of the, uh, the 45 so we can get this car like everything is going to be on wheels. That's how I plan to get it rolling here at the end of this episode. But uh, that will kind of be like the final determination on, uh, you know, setting everything, setting the pinion angle, all that kind of stuff. So as I got it down to the ride height, you know, I did do some adjustments. I set the pinion angle to what I'm pretty sure it should be. And what I am going to do is I am going to tack in, I made a couple marks here with these brackets because these things are just kind of free floating here. You guys can see I put the longer one on the inside because everything kind of, you know, these kind of splay out here. And also to make sure I had good symmetry and everything on both sides, had to do a little bit of fine tweaking and adjusting. But one thing that does make it a whole lot easier, they include these little 3D printed covers here with the kit. And so these sit on top of the rod end and make sure that, that the spherical bearing in there has enough clearance to move and that everything is going to be square and, uh, and lined up. So those are really, really cool little things that they include with the kit. But um, as you guys can see, obviously that is not the pinion angle we want. <laughs> we don't want the drive shaft running out the floor straight into the windshield. And what happens is that obviously when you lift the car up, everything kind of drops down and sets back and this part of it here tilts up. So what I'll do from here, I'll throw the screw jacks underneath of this. We'll wind it back up again. That should then rotate the, uh, the rear end forward. We'll line up our mounting points on here or our tack points here. And we're again, I'm just gonna do like a rough tack to get it in place. I'm pretty sure that's where it's going to be. It's gonna be its final location, but uh, yeah, I will not weld it solid until two things until I have the wheels on it And then also I want to make sure that however that engine is going to sit in there and the angle of that drive shaft to the back We want to make sure that we match that with the rear end as well So the directions say to run a negative one degree pinion angle on this. That's exactly where I set it at It should be good Should match the engine and transmission setup everything like that, but Again, we're going to test fit everything to make sure, and that's why we're doing all of this. Okay, so, so what we'll do from here, like I said, we'll throw the screw jacks under it, we'll set it up, tack those in, and then from there, guys, there's only two parts left to this. The first is to install the rear sway bar, which I did read the instructions, and it does appear that we will have to do just a little bit more welding with the sway bar mounts, but not a big deal. We'll get that done, and then we'll wrap this whole thing up by putting on our new wheelwood brakes. We're converting everything over to disc brakes in the rear, fit our new gunny wheels, roll this thing outside, and see what it looks like on the ground. So let's go ahead, let's get all that done. All right guys, so I've got my rear sway bar completely mocked up here and I apologize again for not recording a lot of it. A lot of this stuff is monotonous and especially after seeing the front, it's really, really easy to kind of put together the back. 
So strapped it around the rear axle right here, typical sway bar mounts to mount it to that. And then up here at the top, we've got the two Allen screws, which go into this little bracket, this little tiny, um, you know, threaded uh, rod end here that goes to the end of that. And then this bracket up here, um, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to put this in right now. So the directions actually say to fit it with the gas tank and then also again at ride height because obviously the rear axle is going to go up a little bit. And then also, you know, we are going to be putting the Aeromotive um, EFI tank into this, which should be the same exact thing as the factory dimensions. Unfortunately, I gave away the gas tank, the original gas tank, to even test fit uh you know what an original one would fit like because right now i've got these actually bolted in holes here in the back which it lines up perfectly for that the bolts actually sunk straight in that could be where it goes i'm honestly not sure the directions kind of show it a little bit more uh vertical and again the last thing i want to do is actually weld this thing to here and then be stuck with the fitment especially if i have to go drilling things out cutting things out if the gas tank doesn't fit so we're gonna leave that temporarily for now. It should be good um, to kind of keep this way, you know, at least to roll it around in the ground and whatnot. Um, but again, we'll have to come back to that once we get the gas tank in it, move that bracket around, cinch it in. And you know, in the pictures, it does show one bolt in one of these locations here, I think just to kind of hold it in place. But it also shows this bracket here on the outside, which for mine, I may try to switch it up and run it inside. I just don't want it exposed here on the outside because you'd be able to see it in the wheel well so try to hide it on the inside like that and then this is also opened up here to accept the larger bolt so don't go putting it in upside down and think that you just have all these adjustment holes these holes right here actually appear to be the uh the plug weld holes which the same thing that they did up there for the uh, the front cross member mount so kind of at a standstill with that it's mocked up and man does it look good <laughs> everything looks really good i love the look of these guys in there too so yeah we'll have to come back for a few things and and tidy those up and i can do those separately guys you've already seen kind of the install of what this all looks like so well let's open this box of willwood brakes and let's see what it all looks like all right you guys got everything unboxed here and let's take a look at it so a bit different from the front end it does not have the two-piece rotor so this one just has a single piece but it does have the internal parking brake four piston calipers couple little gasket pieces here and then it does come with a hardware kit but noticeably a lot fewer pieces in the front obviously with not having to bolt the um, the front cap on that rotor so good thing got some help over here my neighbor jake works for beer so it works out for both of us i think <laughs> but we're gonna get these original drum brakes off here and uh yeah get this thing all fit up All right guys, so my buddy got the brakes completely off and then we also pulled the axles out and I want you to take a look at the inside of this axle here. Hopefully you guys can see up in there, but it's freaking nasty. So this thing is gonna be coming back out regardless once I get the car up on the rotisserie, but I think that'll be the opportunity to uh, get this thing hot tanked and sandblasted, the whole deal, clean this entire axle up the other side, just as bad if not worse. The good thing is, I was watching a video the other day, and when they pulled off the, uh, the diff cover, it actually was completely full of water. So we don't have that situation. Uh, don't look like we have a very good oil situation either though, <laughs> which I think would have saved some of that corrosion. Looking at the axles here, the bearings are in pretty rough shape, but we'll do a rebuild in a future video as well. But uh, just a lot of surface rust. It looks like this thing was sitting for a minute. So again, this is temporary gonna put on the brakes so that way we can make this thing into a roller so we can move it on and do a little bit final metal work before I get it up on the rotisserie so yeah we'll go ahead we'll fit up these uh, Willwood brakes and wrap up this job
All right, guys, so we've got the rear brakes completely installed. Did most of the work myself. I'm just kidding. <laughs> My buddy was a huge help with this. It's a, definitely a bear of a job, but it turned out really, really good. So the only real issue that we had on the inside of this, there is like a flange that sits between the internal parking brake and then also the axle, which is kind of a, a pain in the butt to line up. But aside from that, sure looks pretty. So there's only one thing left to do. Well guys, will you take a look at that? Our 71 Cuda is officially a roller. QA1 front and rear suspension completely installed with the exception of those sway bar mounts that are hanging right there. We'll go ahead and we'll weld those up once we get the gas tank in, but man, this thing looks exceptional. And I tell you what, it is exceptionally low. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that in the video or not, but not having any rubber on these tires. I mean, the gunny wheels come with a little bit of rubber on them just so that way you can roll them around. But uh, yeah, this thing is absolutely slammed to the ground. I think my Dana 60 and also the, uh, the rear strut mounts maybe have two inches of clearance. <laughs> so yeah, won't be an issue once we get rubber on it. But, uh, but yeah, huge progress, you guys. This is a, a huge step and you know, it does allow me to do quite a bit of stuff now that we can put the car all the way on the ground. So, one of which, we can go ahead, we can start nailing out our door gaps because we got some weight back on the car again. And uh, you guys probably already saw the driver's side is already done. The video will be coming out about that here in a couple days. But, uh, I think I spent maybe about five minutes just looking at this thing from different directions here. It turned out so, so good. <laughs> so, I know a couple of you guys were upset that I didn't have a couple videos out in the last week or so, but promise you there's a reason for that so as I was waiting for my gunny wheels to come in had a bit a little bit of extra time on my hands and uh, that happened <laughs> if you guys want to see how that got in there stay tuned I'm gonna promise you I'm gonna have another video out here in another day or two and uh, yeah we're gonna keep on trekking with this car progress is gonna continue to happen very very fast I need to have this car up on the rotisserie and blasted in four days <laughs> so if you haven't done so yet guys hit that subscribe button you're not going to want to miss a minute of this build and uh yeah i think i'm going to stare at it for a few more minutes until dark so take care guys i'll see you guys again real soon